Oh yeah. Big school system. Good. Yeah, how many? How many elementary schools do you have? We have two elementaries and one uh, middle school, and we have approximately we're getting close to 1,700 kids now. We really do like it up here, and we appreciate everybody making it up here and uh, enjoying the nice, fresh, cool air conditioning inside while it's heated outside. Um, they've been a great host to us, and uh, we'd like to continue it here. So this is our annual staff convocation. We have a few speakers. We have a keynote at the end, and uh, we're going to try to send you off on a great start. So, first of all, I'd like to just make a couple of announcements about some people in the audience here. We have, from the, um, from the county superintendent's office, we have Dr. Angela Allen McMillan, right here. Good morning. She's the uh, Morris County Superintendent. We also have our Board of Education members. We have uh, Mr. Cass. We have Mr. Capello, Mr. Kim, and Mr. Anderson. Right here. Someone right there. And we also have um, our police officers. And you know we have a great relationship with the police. We have, our, we have three of our Class 3s, Officers Krentz, Kazab, and Soto. And we have Captain Tucker, Sergeant Sabrizi, Officer Ambrose, and Chief Perna, also here. Our first speaker is from the County College of Morris. I know it says Dr. Iacona, but he couldn't make it today, so we have Dr. Simmons, who's going to come up and speak to us about our program here. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that was so wonderful. <laughs> I knew that with students. We did about 250 students yesterday, and I came in, and I'm all energetic because I get here very early. It's 9 o'clock. They're not as energetic. <laughs> so, good morning. Uh, no, 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 no. I have already been here for two hours. You've got to have me uh, show me some love. So, welcome to County College of Mars. Again, I'm Betty Simmons. I'm the Vice President of Student Development and Enrollment Management. Um, and as I like to say to folks, I'm in charge of all things students outside of the classroom. But I have to tell you, I have spent the last year um, as the interim vice president of academic affairs as well. I gave up that position when we hired a new vice president of academic affairs just about a month ago. But I spent the last year working extremely closely with our faculty, and so I had a chance to work with the entire institution, the academics, the folks on my student development and enrollment management side, plant maintenance staff, our public safety folks across the campus. And I have to tell you, it gave me a great appreciation for the work we do in higher education. But I'm also, and I was sharing with uh, your keynote speaker, I'm also the product of a family that has spent its entire life in education. My father was a high school teacher at Morristown High School and then became a guidance counselor. Um, so education has been in my DNA for my entire life. I have a huge appreciation for every single thing that each and every one of you do in this audience to educate our students. I have a greater appreciation because you all are working at a level that I never want to work on. <laughs> we get them after you have had an opportunity to really develop them. At County College of Mars, we're very, very proud of the students that you send to us. We greatly appreciate your hard work, the opportunities that you have to mold um, the minds of the future. Um, I like to tell the students I want to, them to take care of me when I'm old and gray. I'm getting there a lot faster recently. But you all give them the foundation that they need to do well here at County College of Mars. We are celebrating at the very end of our 50th year here at, uh, in County uh, at CCM. We have done an amazing amount of work to educate the folks after you all have had a chance to really develop them. We continue to look at how we can make things very different for our students. You all know, I talked to our faculty about this, you all know the amount of technology that you have to use to work with your students every day. Well, we are working to try to catch up where you all are because our students are coming to us well prepared uh, in terms of their technological education. We're trying to give them diversity in their experiences here at CCM. We're trying to make sure that they have the best quality education they possibly can. And again, to build upon the foundation that each and every one of you has spent working with them. 
We are so very proud that you all decided to come here and spend the morning with us at CCM. If there is anything that we can do, please know that we are quickly at your disposal. But more importantly, if Tony were here, he would say to you, thank you so very much for everything that you do to support our students in everything, every way, every shape possible. Because the way that you give your students the opportunity to grow helps us to have them grow even further. So welcome to CCM, and thank you very much. So you have a new student too. My wife is actually taking a Spanish class here because she's bilingual but wanted to work a little bit on the grammar. So she's actually in a class starting, uh, I think, next week. So uh, you got one of my family members. Just if anybody else wants to enroll in classes. <laughs> Just to uh, take a minute to introduce some people too from our staff. We've had some changes administratively over the summer. And I'd just like to point out that we have uh, Mr. Seth Corner, if you don't mind standing up. He's our new principal. <laughs> and we also have Mr. John Englishman, our new vice principal at college. <laughs> We're looking forward to a new year, so exciting. Our next guest speaker is uh, Mike Anderson, the president of the Board of Education. Not really a guest speaker, sorry, just a speaker. <laughs> well, good morning, Denville staff, and uh, I want to first thank the County College of Morris for hosting us this morning. We truly appreciate the partnership. i uh, also like to thank Mr. Forte for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak this morning. Uh, welcome to a new school year. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who are returning, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of the board to thank you for an amazing year last year. It was not easy, as seen by the increase in my gray hair, but as expected, each of you stepped up in many ways that I would have never imagined. All of you continue to build a community of growing and learning, and we truly are Denville Strong. I want to extend a warm welcome from the board to our new staff members. Thank you for choosing Denville to bring your passion for education. We're excited to have you on our team. Whether you've been here for 20 years or 20 minutes, I want you to know that you have the backing of the board and we truly appreciate your dedication to all of our children. As I speak this morning, or as I prepared to speak this morning, I thought about what makes our Denville schools so special. It didn't take me long to realize that it was the culture and climate. So like any good engineer, I knew there had to be a formula for how to figure this out. So I did just like our students, just like my kids taught me, I googled, quote, how to create a good school culture and climate. <laughs> I literally spent the next few hours watching YouTube videos and reading articles about school culture and climate. I can tell you, besides for wasting a few hours of my life, <laughs> what I learned is that the formula really just comes down to good people. And what I realized is that we, got that, we already have that figured out here in Denville, so I thank you for bringing all of the good culture and climate to our students. Uh, you're the shining example of how we create incredible school culture and climate. Last year, as I have in past years, I had the opportunity to watch uh, several of the Lakeview students sing and participate in the annual Morris County Memorial Day ceremony. Thanks to Mr. K at Lakeview, um, Lakeview is the only school invited. During the ceremony, several veterans are honored and thanked for their service. Um, it is truly a moving ceremony. At the completion of singing God Bless America, our students lined up, single file, looked in the eyes of every veteran, shook their hand and said, thank you for your service. That is the culture that you have built of respect and dedication for our students. So thank you for doing that. A culture of respect doesn't come from the board president's welcome address, that's for sure, but it's learned from, the, from you over the 185 days that you spend with our children. So I'll leave you with a few final thoughts from my kids. Last year, I asked my wife for advice for my speech. This year, I needed some fresh and new material. <laughs> so I asked my three children for words of wisdom. First, my 10-year-old daughter, Michaela. 
She wanted me to ask if the teachers could shorten the summer vacation because she misses the school so much. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's still sleeping as I speak this morning. <laughs> Michaela Quinn Patrick said to tell you, and I quote, we have a good bunch of you here. Let's have a great year of learning. <laughs> Finally, my nine-year-old daughter, Juliana, suggested that I ask you for less homework, more recess, and she asked Mrs. Baisley if she could pick her classmates next year. <laughs> well, on behalf of the board, I want to say thank you for always going the extra mile. Uh, we want to thank you for making this district one that we're all proud of. We want to thank you for all you've done in the past, but more importantly, what you're going to do this year. You are truly the heart and soul of our school district. Thank you and have a great school year. The first raffle is going to be picked by Mr. Anderson. I'll let you know what it is. I told you it's not pencils and stuff like that. It's good. <laughs> I'm going to start off with, this is for a $10 Denver Dairy gift certificate. And let's see what the number is. 149175. 149175. We're going to do another one. Mr. Anderson, we're going to pick one more. Let's see what this one's for. Oh. <laughs> this one's for a $20 Dunkin' Donut card. 149107. 149107. Up there. All right. All right. We have a few more, but we're not going to do them all. We'll do them as we go. So our next speaker is the president of the of the Foundation of Denville, and he always uh, enlightens us with some great words. Where is Mr. Barnish? My former neighbor. I like to say my neighbor, but he moved. I don't know if it had anything to do with me, but he's got it. Always says some great, a couple great words for everybody. So thank you, Mr. Barnish. Steve. Good morning. Uh, it's really an honor and a privilege to be here. Uh, it's great to see a lot of familiar faces, some new ones, and I hope everybody had a great summer. A lot of you look relaxed. I hope that can continue on to the school year, but if you've got my kids, I know that will not be the case. <laughs> um, I'm the president of the Foundation of Denville. For those of you who don't know, the foundation is a nonprofit that raises money to fund grants written by the teachers and uh, the district as well. Um, and you know, our our goal is to what we say is enhance the educational experience. So, um, you know, we have one fundraiser here. It's coming up. And it's, this is a great opportunity to sort of set the tone for the years, really, for, to, to speak with the teachers. You know, I always like to just kind of start off and give you my perspective on the state of Denville. Um, you know, I, we recently moved, as Steve uh, alluded to, my house is on the market for two weeks and it's sold. And um, it may or may not have had to do for the fact that Steve was my neighbor, but... <laughs> It had everything to do with the fact that people are moving to Denville, houses are selling in Denville because of our school system. Uh, when my wife and I were looking for a new home, we were looking out where I grew up in Long Valley, in Chester, and it, we kept on coming, and I know the school <laughs> systems are good there, but it, we kept on coming back to the same thing, which was, our school system is great, the people are great, the community is great, and we luckily found a place that we could stay right here and could stay in the same school. So it's, it's really, um, it was really a wonderful situation. But really, it, it goes to, you know, in, in Denville, it, it starts from the top down. And, and Steve, I think you've done a, a really fine job over this past year, which had some of its challenges. And it goes all the way down to everybody who's involved in every day at our school system. I see it, I'm there a lot. I, I drive by the school um, on my way to work, 
I'm at town hall often, and I just see the activity, and there's everything is positive, and it all starts with you guys, and it's just really um, fantastic to see, and it's it's really a sense of pride that we have, that I have, um, as as not only a parent but but also the president of the foundation. Um, in the foundation this year, we had some challenges. We had a lot of turnover. Some of our um, Board members have aged out. Their kids have graduated. So we have some new members. We have a new treasurer. And all of that, there was some things kind of got, I was just caught in the weeds. And, and I think some of, the, some of you teachers who had some grants out there know what I'm talking about. We, we weren't as efficient as we could be in the grant process. Um, and I don't want to dissuade anybody uh, in the future for not writing a grant because of those situations. We, have now, um, we, we now have liaisons in every um, school. We have Connie Pillion, Jen Falavino, and Kim Teschmacher. They're our liaisons. Thank you for coming to our meetings. Um, and we also have, uh, we have grant coordinators on the board side. So what that means is when you guys send us a grant and it gets approved by the administration, we, when we get it, we vote on it. Let's say it gets approved. Uh, then there's somebody who will be assigned to make sure that you get your swivel robot and it doesn't take five months. Um, so, you know, we're going to do a better job uh, with that. But I, I kind of want to, to leave you with this, is that we, we want you to spend the money that we raise. And... We want you to write us grants. I know it takes time. It's work. You're done after a day of school, and probably the last thing you want to do is sit down and really think about, hey, listen, how can I go outside of my every day and, and come up with something that's going to be meaningful? Because that's really what it's about. How can you make an impact with the students? How are they going to react to whatever grant that we could possibly fund? I'll tell you what has worked in the past are the experiences, the world dance uh, that Ms. Jameson writes every year and that we're happy to, to fund. Um, you know, we've, we've had the poetry slam in the past. Technology-based initiatives are always, you know, our bread and butter. And, and you know, I don't want to get too detailed, but we, I kind of swayed away from flex seating last year. We're not afraid of flex seating. We're not going to say necessarily say no to flex seating. We just wanted for you to go above and beyond, maybe, and more get some more experience-based um, initiatives and grants. So, listen, we are very excited uh, for, for this new year, and I'm very, very proud and honored to be here. I'm proud to be, uh, you know, as a, a member of the Foundation of Denville, but I'm even more proud to be a parent of uh, students that go to this school. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Gordon should pick a number two for our next, our next raffle, which is a $20 Panera gift card. And we have number 149066. 149066. Anybody? Bueller? Anybody? No? Come on, look, look. 149066. Have one up there. Nice. It's a long walk for you, to marry, but She's a marathon runner. She did good. Thank you, Mr. Barnish. Want to do another one? One, one more for Mr. Barnish. Here we go. Let's see what we have this time. So this is one of my new places now. It's a um, it's a Turkish place. It's in Rockway. It's called Alev. Great Shepherd Salads. Twenty five dollar gift card. And this was donated by Alev too. And it's number 149208. 149208. $25 gift card to Alev. Thank you. So, our next guest is a person I got to, um, I, got the, I had the privilege, uh, privilege of hearing speak at my daughter's Rotary Scholarship presentation. 
and I thought she did a great job. I asked her if she could come and speak to our staff. We're not going to say her full name. Some of you might know her, but our special guest, guest is Judy. She's going to come up now and speak to you. Good morning. I am truly honored to have been invited by Mr. Forte to present a brief biographical sketch of a special gentleman who personified determination in not only pursuing a teaching career, but also fulfilling the American dream. He was an immigrant arriving in Newark, New Jersey from Sicily as a child in 1921. His father was adamant that his first child would bring pride to his family by being the first to graduate from college. Even though his high school guidance counselor attempted to discourage his college dream, he refused to be discouraged. He worked many jobs for a full year after high school graduation and finally had the $120 necessary for his first semester's tuition. <laughs> So in the summer of 1934, he boarded a Greyhound bus and arrived at the University of Alabama to take the first giant step toward the pursuit of his dream. This dream was not easy to attain, for it was the era of the Great Depression, and his father had suddenly passed away leaving a widow with three young children at home. Now, this young man could have dropped out of college, but instead he took on many campus jobs and then opened an unofficial barber shop in his dorm room, <laughs> enabling him to send home three to five dollars a week to his mom. Upon graduation in 1939, since there were no teaching positions available, he was forced to put his dream on hold. When World War II beckoned, he proudly served in the army for five European campaigns. So appreciative was he to have returned home safely that he made a promise to spend the rest of his life helping others. Finally, in 1948, a glimmer of hope for the pursuit of his teaching dream appeared in the classified ads of the Newark Evening News. A junior high history teacher was needed in a remote rural town 22 miles from Newark. The town was called Denville. Now his dream began to evolve. He taught history for seven years at the former Main Street School. He next became principal of Main Street School and finally became Denville School Superintendent, a position he held for 29 years. However, that was not the end of this man's work in education. After retiring in 1986, he spent the next 18 years substituting at Friedlinghuisen Middle School in the Morris School District, where he inspired hundreds of challenging adolescents until a month before his 90th birthday. He had definitely kept his promise of spending his life helping others and working with young people was always his greatest joy. Thank you for allowing me to share with all of you a glimpse into the life of a great educator, my hero, my father, Angelo Spinola.
Thank you, Judy. She gave us a great version. I was really, really touched by the first one. And uh, everything in our district's named after him, so we figured let's have Judy come in and talk about it. I think it's important. <laughs> Our next gift card is going to be another $25 Alev gift card, and the number is 149277. 149277. Anybody? 129, 149277. 149277. We'll hold it. Thank you, Judy. Oh, we're going to do one more. Yeah, sure, Judy. Pick one more. Let's see what this is for. This is for a $10 Sweet Expressions gift card. And the number is 149010. 149010. Okay, so our next speaker comes from a partner organization in our town that's been a tremendous help to us, working through all kinds of different challenges with students, also working through our challenge we had last year, and they're here for us, and they've been, they've been tremendous. I can't say enough. Uh, his name's Warren Ververs, and he's from St. Clair's Behavioral Health. Warren, and although I don't live in Denville, I live across the street from Denville in Mount Tabor, and it kind of counts. <laughs> Not an honorary Denville member, I'm thinking. Um, very happy to be here today. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is at St. Clair's, we embarked on a community ambassador ambassadorship about three years ago to look to strengthen and develop some of the partnerships that we've had with the community agencies. Um, we're absolutely thrilled to reach out to some of the schools, some of the PTAs, some of the other social service agencies. Our specialty is mental health. That's what I do for a living. We had a wonderful experience last year over at Valley View. I don't usually speak to 330 people at once. <laughs> but I am going to Hershey Park as soon as this is over today, so we're all ready to go. Um, so when Steve first talked about this venture, about coming out and speaking to all of you today, I um, thought it was a great idea. So in my mind, he's talking about, you know, having you come and be one of the panel speakers. So in my mind, I, he, I thought I heard him say, so we'd like you to come for about 45 minutes and speak. So I'm like, oh, okay, I can do that. I present all over, not a problem. A few seconds go by and he's like, uh, that's four to five minutes. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's even better. Um, so anyway, happy to be here. Again, I'm one of the managers at St. Clair's Behavioral Health. We will have two additional staff persons in each of the elementary schools this year, and I brought um, actually two of the three staff today. So I have Josette O'Rourke, who will be at Valley View. She's actually a supervisor at St. Clair's for about 15 years, left to have some children, and is now coming back. I also brought Elizabeth E. Knoxon. She's also a social worker. And who's not here today is Brooke Donald, another former St. Clair's employee who will be over in Riverview. So it started out as just a you know a get together. We did a couple presentations at Valley View. We did some of the resource nights for you guys. It has really led to a wonderful partnership. I've been happy to take this initiative over on over um, for the agency. And one of the best things has been getting to really just broaden our ability to help educate people. Um, one of the things that we usually talk about is that it's hard to be a kid these days. I don't know if I want to go back. You know, I have three of my own. Um, 
19, 16, and soon to be 13, it's tough to be a kid. I think it's tough to be a kid, I think it's tough to be a parent, it's tough to be a teacher. We can't just put our heads in the sand, we have to move forward with all the things that happen these days. I speak often about some of the mental health topics that are really pressing that you guys all know about and we do the intense work on. Um, suicide is still the second leading cause of death for people between the ages of 10 and 34. 10 to 34, second leading cause of death. We can talk about the horrors of fentanyl being added to some of the drugs that's out there today. Um, we can talk about, and I do talk about to many people about this awfulness of vaping, which kids take as a, as a great alternative because you smell really fruity and great flavors as you're inhaling 59 milligrams of nicotine in a jewel pack. Um, but anyway, that's for my 45 minute presentation. <laughs> We'll save that for another day. Um, one of the things I really love about doing this kind of work is we get to talk about early intervention and prevention. You know, I've been in the field for 33 years as a licensed clinical social worker. I remember being the new kid on the block. Moving my hand up, Stephen. Um, and some of what we try to do is we help everybody. We work with people that make some awful choices and the aftermath of those decisions that linger on. There's certainly enough examples in the world about adults making bad decisions um, and left with, you know, the fact that actions and behaviors have consequences. We help people try to make better decisions um, and we try to hold people accountable for the actions whether they're 5 or 55. So a lot of what we do here at the agency we're really going to bring to you guys in the schools. We've seen, you know, 35 kids in Valley View. We did 100 in or 450 individual sessions. We've done some small group therapy. We've done some social skills tra training. We've done some coping skills. Um, we've really done a lot of everything. Our goal here at St. Clair's is just to continue the partnership and see what we can do to help you guys help others. You know, that's really what we're all here for. It really does take a village. And on behalf of St. Clair's, we're just looking forward to another great year of really trying to help people. That's what we're all about. So looking forward to working with all of you and the staff as well. And uh, I'm off to Hershey Park. Warren, <laughs> would you pull out a number? This one's for that Alev gift card. So when I was at a speaking engagement last week, I won the raffle for the giant ticket. I hope this is that ticket for you guys. <laughs> Let's see, this is for an Alev gift card. 149157. 149157. Of course. Warren's going to pick another number for us. $25 Starbucks gift card. 149004. 149004. And another one. Okay, great, thank you. Oh, we're going to do one more. We have, let's see what we're giving first. We're going to give a $25 Panera gift card. 149285. 149285. You have it? Okay. So our next part of our presentation has to do with our the state of the district, some goals, things like that. Here are some of our projects we did this summer. We did the uh, new flooring in the Riverview Tech Lab. We also did the new windows at the Valley View at the Valley View Bridge. The security bollards at Lakeview that was to prevent a tragedy of someone mistakenly driving forward rather than backing up and going into the playground. We also have our very proud signs to do with our School of Character Awards from Riverview and Lakeview. Both received state and national awards. And I know Lakeview sign, similar to the one that Riverview has, will be installed soon. And also thank you to the tech department for the great job they did on the Chromebooks at Valley View. Uh, they look really great this year. The 
uh, the new cases are excellent. And the, lab, the Lakeview Tech Lab got new carpeting. The playground was refinished. I think it looks great. What do you think, Ed? Yeah, it looks good. If he says it's good, it's got to be good. Um, and then uh, one of our Valley View alum, about my age, maybe like two years younger than me, so he's probably uh, 50. He's uh, Dan Nappy, and that's him on the left pointing, pretending like he's trying to do something there, but he's... There, he's in charge of doing the, the Valley View locker room renovation. It's one of those ones that's going to go right to the end. And I took that picture about a day ago, so obviously we're not quite there, but we're getting there. So our district goals for this year, this, these are approved by the Board of Ed, to increase achievement for all students who are not, not meeting grade level benchmarks, which comes from our strategic plan 2A through D, to expand social emotional learning and mental health programs, which supports strategic goal 3B, and to investigate and prepare a plan for potential student population growth, which supports strategic plan uh, goal 4C. And that last part on the bottom, I'm going to talk to you in a little while. So Dr. Cullis is coming up to talk to us about her goal. Good morning. Uh, as every year, we always look for a way to find a, or make our products and our programs more efficient, more effective, and more engaging for our students. So we have a wide variety of resources to help support in that initiative and see quite a few things uh, that we're doing this year. In addition, this is the biggest kindergarten we've had in more than a decade, so we're just under about 190 students. So we had a dip, but now we're on our way back up, and we do have nine sections uh, of kindergarten this year. So we have quite a few. But one of our biggest initiatives is, that we spent time with this summer is really looking at our academic programming. And what is it that we really need to be focusing on to make sure that our students leave Denville with the basic skills to move on to high school and to wherever they go in the future? And to give you an example, this summer, you ready to move the slide? Yep. This summer, <laughs> I went through a drive-through and had a self or a soft serve ice cream cone. It costs two dollars and twelve cents. So I dug into my change, get rid of some of those pennies. I had my two. I had five dollar bill, and I dug out twelve cents. I gave the gentleman the five dollars and twelve cents. I got back. A $10 bill, a $5 bill, three ones, and 88 cents. And I was like, okay. Well, this could either be that he just got a great text, he was on his phone, which he was, but he probably got a great text and he was distracted. Uh, he was just paying attention to something else. And what we hope never happens to any of our students is that he didn't know. I gave him back the money. I explained to him, I said, this is yours, and then I took out my $3 uh, of what was mine and gave it back to him. And he was so thankful, because I a look of shock that he was going to get in trouble, uh, giving all this change back, giving it back to him. But what it made me really think about was, in that moment, he wasn't using his logic. He may have just not noticed it was a five, however, he wasn't thinking that this was not reasonable to give back all of this change. And so when we look at what our initiatives are here in the district, that our students really need to leave here with reading, writing, communication, and math skills. That we are all, everyone is in this room, are responsible to make sure that our students leave with those. And even though I hear often I'm not so great at math, the reality is you are amazing at math because math is about logic, logical thinking. So no matter what role you do in this district, you are a logical thinker. You make decisions in your classrooms, on the buses, in the hallways, in administration, logically. And that is what we need to teach our students. So just like we were all about reading it across the curriculum, writing across the curriculum, this year our Math Matters initiative is about math across the curriculum. Every one of us will be focused on how do we bring logical thinking into our classrooms, so that we don't have students that make mistakes that take away their independence, 
and make them victims, victims of being, of being vulnerable to victimization. Right? We, they need to know some basic logic and decisions in their life. So we have a lot of great ideas. We'll get into more details in our buildings. How are we bringing math in? We have four prongs of, uh, from professional development to parent involvement. We're really going to focus on this year. So I'm very excited about the Math Matters Initiative. You're going to hear a lot more about it. But I hope you join me on this journey of really making our kids more successful and really more capable individuals. So thank you. May I have um, Dr. Angela Allen McMillan to take a, a, call, a pick a number, please? For this is for a Summit Maine twenty-five dollar gift card. Thank you. One four nine zero two six. One four nine zero two six. Our next speaker is Grace Johnson, our Director of Special Services. Okay, uh, thank you all. I hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, today I wanted to talk about our other goal, the expanding the social emotional learning and mental health program for our district. I'm really excited about this goal. It uh, is a big part of that is our expansion with St. Clair's. We did start last year, as Mr. Rivers said, with uh, Valley View, a pilot program working with a clinician from St. Clair's, and now we're expanding to the elementary schools. Uh, but to expand on, a, on this goal, we did have to have a strong foundation, and I think we really do have that over these past many years we've been working towards uh, a strong foundation for our mental health and students with significant behavioral needs. And it really is a team approach. So that's what I have here pictured. Um, in Denville schools, we really we have a strong crisis staff. We have school psychologists, social workers, counselors, school nurse, who are all trained and understand um, issues impacting our students that relate to significant behaviors and mental health concerns. So we have that strong foundation here to help us with, the, with these challenging students. Uh, the other piece we also have is train other trained staff. Many of you in here have received different levels of training to support our students with uh, significant mental health or behavioral concerns. So for example, we have, many of you have gone through or will go through crisis prevention intervention training. We're fortunate enough to have a district trainer who is with us this year and, and for the past several years, and that's Debbie Minieri. And um, she was a Lakeview school counselor, so we appreciate that she continues to get recertified and be able to train many of you if you're going to be working with students who might have these needs. And now I'm just going to jump over to district partnerships. So we've been working with the Uncommon Thread for the past few years. They provide us with behaviorists and board certified behavior analysts in all of our schools. We're expanding it a little bit this year by adding an extra day of service to Valley View. And they will help us with students who might need more uh, focus on behavioral interventions. So behavior plans, things like that. They're here to support us. Also, um, for a few years now, we've been working with St. Clair CER. So if, if a student presents as a danger to self or others, we have now have a partnership with the CER, which is a Center for Evaluation and Referrals. And through that partnership, it makes for a smoother assessment process for students so that we can get them into a hospital-type setting, have them evaluated and either clear to return to school or get them other services that they need before they can return to school. So that's why it really is that partnership with the parents, the community. Um, a lot of the time, once they're at CER, they, they might get referred for counseling to uh, medical professionals. So we're working with the family. So all of these parts need to work together to really support these students with challenging behaviors and mental health issues. Um, so I'm going to bring it back now to all staff and administration. For that piece, um, I wanted to discuss some things we can think about for all staff, what we can all do to support these students, because it really is something we can all be a part of. It's great that we have these partnerships and these uh, well-trained professionals as resources, but we all can have an impact on these students. 
one thing is to keep in mind that their goals may be different than our general curriculum goals. Sometimes we might have to focus more on their mental health and social emotional needs at first to get them where they need to be so they can be focused on what all of our students are focusing on. So keeping that in mind that we might need to have different priorities for these students if they're that having that many struggles. So how do we do that? Then we have um, the resources available to help us with that because that's a challenge. It's tricky. It's a tricky balance. Balancing, of course, we want to have rigor and we want to challenge them and have that high standard for all of our students. But how do we balance that with students who are having these significant issues that are impacting them? So that's why we have our resources as I've gone over here. So they're here for us to help us with that process. Um, and finally, the, uh, what we can all do is really just show that we care, build rapport with the students, and try to find their strengths. Because any one of us could have that impact on a particular student who's struggling. If you make that connection with that child, you might be the one that, that helps them break through. So we can all have an impact, and so it really is a partnership between all of these resources. So uh, that's all. Thank you. Grace, would you pick a number? Two. This is for the barn. Forty dollar gift card to the barn. Let's see what we have here. We have one four nine two five four. One four nine two five four. Barn. And one more. Let's see what this is for. This one's for a free haircut. At Bishops. Free haircut at Bishops. 149102. 149102. 149102. No? Alright, we'll take another one. Free haircut at Bishops. 149047. Maybe nobody really wants a haircut. Here we go. Here. <laughs> so, we put up a goal, one of our goals is to work on our facilities and have enough instructional space for our students. It's been a challenge here for our district for 15 plus years. We've had trailers, you know this, is the, last year was the first year we didn't have trailers. I can tell you, while I'm here, we won't have trailers again. So what we're trying to do now is we're looking at leasing St. Mary's School. There's going to be a lot more information as this thing follows, and I'll keep everybody in the loop. It's, it's in the preliminary stages, but St. Mary's closed in June, and we're looking at making it making St. Mary's an annex for Riverview, meaning that would allow us to bring more students into Riverview, open up St. Mary's across the street, and have a, a Riverview East-West campus. So it's... Again, there's a lot of details to work out. It's just something that's, that's out there. We talked about it in a public board meeting. I wanted to make sure the entire staff was aware that this is something that we're looking to do. It's, not, it's definitely not in its final stages. It's still things that we're working out. And we will conduct more meetings and discussions about this as we, as we progress. But I wanted to make sure everybody understood that that's something that we're looking at. So this is important. Um, I know I'm not supposed to use that see something say something because it's like copyrighted, but whatever. <laughs> so student and staff safety and security is the number one priority for, for the entire district. Everybody knows that. I've said it a million times. We keep talking about it. I just wanted to put that little comment up there because if you do see something that's odd or hear something that's odd, something doesn't just sit right with you. Please, make sure you talk to your supervisor or me. Even if it's just whatever, we'll look into it. We all, we, on this year for going back to school, there's a sign on every door that says that this door must remain closed and locked. <laughs> going back to when Chief Wagner was here, it was a simple thing. He said something like, oh, we're gonna put police officers, we're gonna put cameras, we're gonna do it. Well, he said, are the doors locked? That's a good question. So we're keeping the doors closed, we're, going to, we're all going to be in this together. Security is always as good as its weakest link, really. 
So we're all in this together. I just made that phrase up right now, too. So nobody can take that. I'm copywriting that. I think that's actually good. I don't know how I just came up with that. But yeah, it is. It is only as good as the weakest link. So we're all in this together. You know that we all care about it. The gentleman in the front, the gentleman over here, all of our administrators, all of our staff, we all know that we have to be safe and secure to learn. It's the most important thing. Kids can't go to school if they don't feel comfortable, if they don't feel safe. Parents can't send their kids to school if they don't feel safe. So it's, it's, it's on all of us to make sure that we're doing everything we can every day to make sure our kids are safe and secure, as well as our staff. So, where is Debbie? Last year I forgot, so this year I'm going to have Debbie. She's going to make an announcement. She's coming down. All right, just be careful over here. She's got a ticket, and I'll have her pick one, too. Okay. Thank you. He told me I was allowed to say three words, but I'm going to say more. <laughs> First of all, one of my favorite sayings is, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Everyone here in Denville is important. Everyone's job in Denville is important. Now because it's also more important to be nice, <laughs> I'm happy to announce that we will be paying our staff early again this year. Our September 15th payroll will be paid on September 6th. So have a great school year! I thought she was going to say, when she started talking about that uh, everybody's important, I thought she would say, but not everyone's nice, because she works right <laughs> next to me. That's what I expected her to say, but I'm glad she didn't. So did you pick one? Okay, this is for a Thatcher's $25 gift card. Thatcher's $25 gift card. 149200. 149200. Anybody? Oh, up there. Okay, the matters of another hall. All right. So we like to make a little bit light of that, but I think it's I think it's a great thing that we've been trying to do for everybody. We understand you haven't gotten paid since June, whatever. You know, if we could give you a paycheck a week before, it's great. Um, don't complain that there's too much time between this check and the next one, though. There's nothing else I can do about that. But, but this is just something that we like to do, and I always like to have Debbie do it. And last year, because I didn't have her on here, I forgot. So I knew I would make a statement with her, with her pretty face up there. So thank you. So we're getting to our keynote now. We have uh, Gail Kreitzer who is going to speak to you about dashboarding minds, which is uh, like a self-help kind of thing. So, um, Gail's coming up now, come on up. There she is.
This song was written almost 40 years ago, if you can believe it. And I believe the message is arguably more relevant today than it was back then, right? Okay, so raise your hand if you can relate to that sentiment often. <laughs> All right, look around. Well, me too. And that is precisely why I am here today. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on myself. I was born and raised in Hunterdon County, New Jersey. I grew up on a small farm. I woke up to roosters crowing every single morning. I studied city planning in college, and I worked for many years as an HR professional. Today, I live in Randolph with my husband and two teenage daughters. Now, I don't live in Denville, but I too feel a special connection to Denville because my eldest goes to the Morris County School of Technology, and I feel like I live there, right? I'm driving there all the time. All right, so here are some just random facts. I'm an identical twin. One of my daughters has a usual, unusual health condition. You will never see me walking on the beach without shoes or socks on. And I used to be a massive Game of Thrones star, a uh, fan. <laughs> Maybe next year. Okay, so I used to be a massive fan until season eight. Anyone else? Anyone else feel me on that? All right, so I share this background with you because I'm pretty ordinary. I'm not disparaging myself, but my life is pretty ordinary. Spoiler alert, I have not climbed Mount Everest. Anyone else? Okay. I am not an astrophysicist, and I am not the world champion hot dog eater. No, I am not. So what is my claim to fame? At least in my own mind. Okay. I declutter overwhelmed minds. I feel strongly that mental clutter significantly impacts how we feel and function. So I am on a mission to help as many people as possible free up their awesome minds. And I do that by sharing dashboarding. So dashboarding is a highly visual approach to organization designed to foster work-life balance, efficiency, and mindfulness. It's a sequence of highly intentional organizational habits and strategies. Hmm, organization as a keynote? Is that what you're thinking? Well, Steve had a similar response when I met with him back April, okay, and we were talking about this, and he was like, Gail, you're different. And I said, Steve, if by different you mean unique, then yes, I am different. Okay? And after talking some more, he said, Gail, you're a little workshoppy. And I said, Steve, if by workshoppy, you mean that I'm highly practical, pragmatic, and action oriented, then yes, I am workshoppy. Steve wanted to make sure that my message would resonate with every awesome individual in this room today. And I've got to tell you that I can feel your awesomeness. So let's pause for a moment and give it up for yourselves right now. If you feel like you're on the precipice of a fall smackdown and you've got so much going on in your life right now. So raise your hands if you've got a lot of balls in the air across all areas of your life. Keep it raised. Yeah, me too. I call it the fall smackdown. You guys are good. I like this. That's good. We need very calm police force. like there's never enough time. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share my objective of this presentation. It's simply to help provide you with ways to feel more in control. 
of your busy and hopefully awesome life. Does that sound good? Yes. yes. Okay, wonderful. So, I'm going to uh, teach you three, uh, I'm going to provide you with a practical way to clear your mind so your best and most important thoughts have room to unfold and stretch. Improve your self-awareness. And by self-awareness, awareness really help you just gain a clearer perception of who you are and help you get to less. Now, what do I mean by that? Sometimes people are like, what? Less? Well, as I have been working uh, uh, with a lot of busy minds over the last few years, never once has anyone have come up to me and said, hey, Gail, can you help me do more? Never. Okay? What most people want is they want a way to get to less so that they are less connected with things that don't serve them, more connected to things that don't, and ultimately so that they can feel like they're living in the present. Right? Does that resonate with you guys? All right, so I have not always been so obsessed and passionate about the power of mental organization. I'm going to share a flashback with you from several years ago. Several, several years ago. Um, I was working hard, trying to do it all for myself and my family. And for the most part, I was getting it all done. Except I found myself trying to work harder, longer, and faster in order to keep up. All right? And as a result, I really felt on edge, irritable, and short-tempered. Okay? And I had a moment of reckoning. I was outside in my driveway, screaming at my young kids to get in the car. Because we were late for something, I don't even remember what it was. But I was not just screaming, I was losing it. And as I'm losing it, suddenly, the UPS man rounds the corner with a package. Okay? He sees me, carefully puts down the package. <laughs> Looks at me and goes, have a nice day, Gail. <laughs> Runs up. Okay. So I remember I was so embarrassed. Highly embarrassed. Now, I was pretty sure that the UPS man has seen and heard everything, right? But it was the first time that I heard myself. Can you relate to that? And I remember thinking to myself, when did I become this person? So full of stress. Okay? So I started thinking long and hard about stress and where stress originates. Where does stress originate? In your mind. In your mind. Now, some moments I'm like, no, it originates with my kids, <laughs> you know, my husband, my job. But it absolutely starts in, my, in our mind. So I was thinking about, well, what is going on in my brain when I'm feeling kind of out of my mind? The answer? A lot. I realized I was carrying around so many, you know, so much stuff, so much mental clutter in my brain. I see a lot of people laughing, you know, because normally when I give presentations, you really can't quite read the screen. In this, you can see everything. So I was carrying around short term tasks, long term tasks, no term tasks. Do you guys know what a no term task is? It's simply something that you want, need to do, have to do maybe, but there's no forced deadline and no one is forcing you to do it. So it could be something as simple as, we should update our will sometime. Now it wasn't just tasks or to-dos that were filling up my brain, also thoughts, ideas, worries, questions. Now don't get me wrong. I was organized. I've always been organized. I mean, not crazy organized, but I had my tools and my strategies. But I found in you know, today's modern age is that ultimately, you know, it was all coming at me so fast, and I had all these different tools that I was using, but I was really afraid. I didn't know where I could put certain things so they wouldn't get lost or buried, right? So I found myself holding on to them. A lot. Many of them saying, okay, I've got to remember, I've got to remember. 
and it made me feel like I was on this treadmill, okay? I felt highly reactive, never really in front of the eight ball, never really pausing. So maybe you guys can relate. You know, this first image, we know that stress can be a little healthy, right? You start off, and you, you're doing it, and you're like, look at me. I got everything under control. But as time goes on, and maybe you are still at the same pace and intensity, you may find yourself starting to break into a bit of a sweat, right? It's getting hard. And you might even start asking yourself, why am I doing all of this? And then, as more time goes on, you might just start to feel like this, highly depleted, highly on edge, and you might even start to feel like something's going to give if I don't figure this out. And what I find with working with clients, you know, that something, when they reach this point, could be along the lines of their health, maybe their marriage, maybe their job. So obviously, you know, this is a point which is, uh, you know, really, really a tough place to be in. So we're all here together. I'd like to just take a little inventory. Raise your hand if you, on a day-to-day -day basis, identify with image number one. Okay. Image number two. Okay. And image number three. All right. Brave souls raising your hand. And I feel you because I was really all about image number three. And I was searching for a way out. Okay? And I felt like I had a great health and wellness toolkit. I felt like I was doing all the right things. You know, I yoga, meditation, exercise, hanging out with friends, you know, being one with nature. But I didn't feel like they were addressing the root cause of my stress wasn't enough. So I started um, really paying attention to how I was organizing my life, my mind, and I started experimenting with a lot of the things out there, read books, apps, different tools, and nothing seemed to help. So in an effort to solve my own problem, I grabbed some simple home office supplies and quite unexpectedly, a unique and highly effective approach to organization, to managing, you know, all the moving parts of my busy life began to unfold. And it made me feel so much better in such a short amount of time that I knew I wanted to share my secret with others. And that's what I've been doing for the last several years, and that's why I'm here today. So I'm here today to serve up dashboarding, the foundation, really, of dashboarding, to just give you another tool that you can put in your health and wellness toolkit. All right, so the overarching analogy of dashboarding is like physical clutter. I know everyone relates, you know, at some point in your life you might have a closet that looks like this, and you've had it, and you're like, all right, I'm ready to deal with it. You, and, you know, you work hard to get to the image uh, of B. And typically, there are some universal steps that we take when we've had it and we want to resolve this problem. What is the first thing we do? Yes! Oh my gosh. Do you have any more raffles? This person needs to win the raffle. No? Okay. Alright, we take everything out. And we don't take one thing out of a at a time. We take everything out to really start the culling process. Right? So we can see everything, inventory, compare, contrast. You might see things in there that you totally forgot about. You might see things in there, you're like, what is that doing in there? You might suddenly see, oh my gosh, why do I have 45 pairs of black pants? Or, hey, I have no dress pants anymore that I really like. All right, so it, it really allows you to make important decisions and choices. And once you get to, and hopefully you do get to image B, how do you feel? How does it feel? It feels not great. It feels amazing, right? Um, and I started thinking a lot about that, and I was like, you know, why does it feel amazing? Yes, it's organized, but what I started focusing on is that there was a lot more space. 
and space opens up possibilities again. So it's the same exact concept, dashboarding, is I'm going to help you go from here to here, okay? Isn't it amazing I found a picture, two separate pictures that somewhat go together, by leveraging dashboarding, all right? So now here is where we're gonna get a little workshoppy. Does everybody have a handout and something to write with? If not, raise your hand and we'll get you a piece of paper. All right, I have Nell walking around. So just wave down Nell. All right, so I'm gonna share a series of simple steps and habits. Some of these steps and habits are gonna seem very familiar to you and you're gonna be like, well, okay, I do that, or maybe I don't do that. But it's really the sequence. And I invite you all today to trust the process and be in it to win it because this is all about you and your awesome mind. All right, so the first thing I invite you to do when you open up the handout on the left-hand side is a box that says priorities. And I invite you to jot down your top three priorities. What is most important in your life right now across everything? Okay? So just take about 15 seconds and don't overthink it. And why do I do three? There's a great, great quote by Jim Collins who wrote Bill Celeste, if you have more than three priorities, you don't have any. A little mind blowing. All right. Did you get them down? Yeah? Okay. Can I get one brave volunteer, maybe in the front, yes, see, this is why you never sit in the front again, to share their top three priorities. And you smiled, so I'm going to ask you, shout out your top three priorities. Family, career, and health. Family, career, and health. Excellent. So, what I have found over time is that most people don't have any difficulty identifying their priorities. I mean, you might pause. For a moment, be like, husband, dog, dog, husband. All right, that's just me. Okay, okay, that's just me. Um, but for the most part, we don't have any trouble. What is much more difficult to do in our modern world is staying connected to those priorities. Often, they feel very far away and very aspirational. So dashboarding will help you Strengthen your connection to your priorities by, spoiler alert, strengthening your, your connection with yourself. All right, so the next step, right underneath that box is a larger rectangle entitled Unpack. I invite you right now, I'm going to give you about a minute and a half, maybe a little bit more, we'll see is I invite you to unpack all the mental clutter that you are carrying around in your busy, awesome brain right now. You just, all you need to do is think about, as soon as you walk out of here, what do you need to do or think about? Whoa, oh my gosh, okay, feel the energy. Here, so I'm gonna put some prompts on the screen. You don't really need to look at them, you really just go within right now and unpack pack as much as possible, be in it to win it, nothing's too small or big, on your mark, get set, unpack. Minute and a half. What do you need to start? Research, pick up, who do you need to call? Who do you need to thank? Who do you need to ask for help? Get it all out. 
Think about every area of your life. What are you holding on to? Eyes on your own paper. I'm just kidding. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap. Excellent. Hopefully you have a bunch of things on your paper right now. So now, I invite you to break it down. And I know that there's a lot of teachers in the room, so I'm guessing many of you have already done this. But I just want you to take a moment to see if you can create some lists within that brain release. And maybe just some, you know, category headings, like things that are all related to errands you need to run. Or things that you need to do in your classroom or things, phone calls that you need to make. So I don't want to leave the witness here because this is your awesome mind, but take 15 seconds, see if you can come up with like five categories. All right, wonderful. So I'm not gonna ask anyone to share their categories, you can see some of mine. And I just want to pause here and tell you that when I did these same exercises years ago, I spent a lot more time and I looked at my email, my calendar, uh, my desk paperwork, I walked around my house, I looked, you know, really everywhere, even my yard, to help loosen it all up so I can, could let it all out. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to dashboard. And I'm just giving you the definition. A dashboard is simply a collection of lists that are organized together according to a specific area of your life or mind. You can think of a car dashboard. When you're driving your car, everything you need to do in order to make you know, safe, effective decisions in regards to operating you know, your vehicle, it's all laid in front of, out in front of you. And that's no accident. It's for quick and easy access. So the car dashboard keeps everything visible, accessible, and centralized. You're not looking all over the place. How much gas do I have? Or, you know, how fast am I going? That's what a dashboard is. So before I give you a chance to create your first dashboard, I am going to overshare. You're welcome. Okay, I'm an identical twin, and um, I think that is what that has caused me to just feel so comfortable with sharing. We have shared everything. Um, sometimes we have to remind our husbands, you know, anything you say kind of will probably be shared with the other one. But I've learned that when you share, you learn. Okay, so I am going to share today what my dashboard, my first dashboard really looked like, what took shape years ago. Okay, so... I started out by creating different receptacles for my husband and children. And basically, I used these receptacles to store tasks, thoughts, ideas, anything that I needed to do, think about in relationship to that individual. So just very quickly, like with my husband, we should schedule a date night. Should we host a 4th of July party? <laughs> With my daughters, maybe I wanted to make sure we discuss the science test or revisit the laundry uh, chores or the allowance uh, or plating and etiquette, okay? And the benefit of storing those things is that I didn't, you know, feel like I needed to hold on to it. And, I, and especially, you know, when, you, when the time is right, you have everything at your fingertips ready to go, okay? So I also created a receptacle to lasso errands, like maybe I need to pick up a hostess gift, maybe I need to return a shirt. I don't like driving places and then coming home and realizing, oh my gosh, I could have done this, this, and this. A receptacle for 10 minute tasks, you know? If I have 10 minutes, what are some quick things that I can get done? All right, like maybe print out the school lunch menu, maybe email friends about a show in New York City. I also kept a receptacle for fun stuff. How many times have you heard someone say, wow, you know what, you should really check out dot, 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 Bush Kill Falls, or something awesome, and you're like, ooh, that sounds really, really good. I wanna, I'd like to do that. Well, years ago when I did this, I literally unpacked like 
um, we should fly a kite sometime. I just remember we had never fl flown a kite as a family, and I wanted to make sure you know I, I put that down. I also had receptacles for volunteering. I was highly involved in uh, volunteering. I was on the board. I was in charge of financial development. Household-related things, I'm sure, like many of you, you know, there's an endless list of things that you need, you know, to give your attention to. Maybe there are health-related items that you want to lasso and put somewhere. I also unpacked my feelings, which we were going to get to later. Okay? So, I'm going to now give you an opportunity to create your very first practice dashboard. So if you look at your handout and you open it up and you have the left-hand side where you released your brain and you started to identify some categories, I invite you to move them over into the rectangle, it's just a mini dashboard on the right, so that you can get a feel for this. Now, how you set up your template is entirely up to you and that's the point. It's your awesome mind. This is an opportunity for you to think about how you think. So instead of reacting, right, we're like, oh, this is my mental closet, and I've got this drawer, and this drawer, and this drawer. So I'm going to give you about a minute to kind of get the party started with your dashboard. Go ahead, no talking, please, and just focus on your dashboard. All right, so time's up. Now, when I do more in-depth training sessions, obviously I give you a lot more time, and I even encourage you to share with a partner and share with groups. And it's really, really powerful when you do that because you start to see how other people think and organize, and it gives you ideas you know, that you never thought of. We don't really have, you know, this is not set up for that, but that's certainly something that you can do. All right, so once I created my family dashboard, it was really clear, you know, given that I was juggling so many different things, that I needed and wanted to create dashboards for every other area of my life and mind that was really overwhelming me. So you can do the same thing. You can create a dashboard dedicated to your family, your personal life, your job, maybe your health, a, a special project, maybe you're heavily you know, involved in volunteerism and you want to separate that. And the nice part about this is that A, it really helps you, you know, take the weight off your mind, but it keeps things separate but highly accessible. And it allows you to pivot when you need to pivot. Because I don't think any of us spend our entire like day or eight hours in one space. We have to pivot a lot, okay? So, given that we are, you know, summer's winding down, the fall, uh, the school year is winding up. I want to take a moment to just talk about work dashboards, okay? Because this is what we're all staring down. So, when you think about creating your work dashboard, you can think of key people. Right? Key responsibilities, can store things in there, you know, next time we meet with maybe my supervisor, this is, these are a bunch of things that I want to talk about. Maybe you have ongoing meetings, okay, and you want to store things, the next meeting I want to make sure I ask this, or bring this, or talk about that. 
things that you're researching. You can even use this for overwhelming tasks where you break it down into steps. I'm sure as teachers, this comes completely naturally to you. You're doing this with your students, right? So you can do this for yourself as well. So you can really do a lot of things um, with your work dashboard. Now, this is just a sample, since I know there's so many teachers in here. Um, one of my dashboardians shared um, a dashboard related to getting ready for the school year. So she created receptacles for a phone call she needed to make, prep reading, classroom setup, decorating classroom, things she needed to buy. Maybe she didn't get that grant. I know I'm sorry, that's what I do. Um, okay, she also shared uh, on an ongoing basis, you know, that she would create receptacles to store student issues. Maybe things related to common planning, classroom management, lesson plans, and prep work. So I'm sharing this with all of you just to get your mind going. Your dashboard, however you decide it, you, you make it work for you, obviously. Okay, so you can also use dashboarding to break down maybe an overwhelming health condition. And this really represents the why of my journey. So I had been dashboarding for a while and it really did help me feel more in control. And then my eldest daughter came down with a highly unusual health condition and we had no idea what was going on. We thought we did, that was, that was the sad part, okay? And we did all the wrong things and it brought my family you know, unit crashing down. It was a really, really tough time of my life, but I turned to dashboarding. I put dashboarding to the test. And basically, I unpacked all the moving parts to managing her health. Because all the doctors that I was bringing her to, basically everyone kept saying the same thing. She's fine, she's just difficult. Right? And I knew that that wasn't the case, so I started reaching out to lots of different doctors, research, I worked with the school, I you know, read books, and ultimately, it took me about a year, I figured out what was going on with her, and while she is not cured and there's actually no cure, it really released our family from so much pain, and even her, understanding what was going on. So I share this with you today because maybe you don't have a child that has an unusual health condition. Maybe you are navigating an overwhelming health issue or maybe that of an elder parent. Okay, so what I found, you know, is that it's not just tasks and to-dos that can hold us back, you know, that kind of mental clutter. Emotional baggage does a number on us, doesn't it? Right? It can really impact our logic and our thinking, how we feel about ourselves, and then how we treat others. So this goes back to the oversharing part of the presentation. When I gave myself permission to get everything out of my cluttered brain, I unpacked my feelings. I didn't even need to. But there they were. I lassoed them, and I unpacked them. And here they are. This is from several years ago. I am the worst mom. I feel angry around my kids. Ken is not hearing me. What is going on with Sierra? I am exhausted. I am not smart enough. Now, I share all that with you because that was my inner critic. That was my gremlin. That was this loop that was playing around in my brain kind of subconsciously. And I, it really, you know, made me cry when I realized what kind of feelings I was holding on to. And I believe, and I will share with you, that if you are able to expose your gremlins to the daylight, to broad daylight, not necessarily everyone in the room, but to yourself, that that's when you can really start to address them and overcome them. Okay, so I do not invite you right now to unpack your feelings, but I certainly encourage you to do that later on and get clear on what you're carrying around in your brain. Now, it propelled me to create 
an empowerment dashboard, I thought to myself, you know what? If it's helpful to stay attack, you know, connected to the tasks, the thoughts, the you know, to-dos, why not stay connected to things that made me feel awesome? All right? Now, I use the word empowerment. That's kind of a loaded word. It's kind of an overused word. Everybody has their own, you know, I guess, definition or interpretation. And all I'm saying here for, as an empowerment is positive. Okay? So I'm going to share my empowerment dashboard that I use to keep me centered, to keep me strong, and to create energy. So I unpacked gratitude. I know that is something most of us have had experience with, but you can keep it front and center and unpack your gratitude. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for the space I have in my life and mind. I am grateful for my loving and supportive husband, children, family, and bosom friends. Maybe you create a receptacle for personal development. Things that you want to do, that you dream of doing, put that front and center. I actually want to go on a vinyasa retreat. Um, I don't know if you've heard about these types of retreats, but you can go away for like 10 days with no talking at all. Have you guys heard of that? Okay, well, I am a talker, in case you haven't noticed, and when I have heard other people talk about it, it is like an incredibly powerful experience. So that's something I'd like to do. You can also unpack your strengths. Why not? Right? We tend to focus our attention on our weaknesses, but take a moment to revel in your awesomeness and unpack your strengths. How about a bucket list? How many people here do have a bucket list? Raise your hand. Great. How many of you keep it front and center and you're looking at it all the time or often? Okay. Not as many as you. So this is a great way to stay connected to that. For me, top on my list is I want to go on a dude ranch vacation because I grew up with horses and I do. I do want to go on a dude ranch. Okay. So, mantras. That's also sometimes a little bit of a loaded word. Affirmations. Really what this is about is an opportunity for you to unpack phrases, things that maybe you heard growing up, maybe you say to your own family members, or maybe you say to yourself, right? When you need to, you know, be lifted up. So my favorites are, every problem has a solution. Anything is possible, and it used to be winter is coming. Okay, game of thrones. Joke, humor. Okay. You can also unpack your goals, right? So maybe you have goals. Maybe they're somewhere buried away. Put them on your empowerment dashboard, okay? I want to meet Oprah. I really do. I intend to meet Oprah. That's on my empowerment dashboard. All right, so... I'm going to give you an opportunity to get started on your empowerment dashboard. It is on the very back of your handout. And I have some categories on here, but you can play around with this. Because dashboarding is really designed to fit your needs and your preferences. Okay? So maybe you focus on one or two. Maybe you write down all the category headings so you have them for later. I'm going to give you about 45 seconds, maybe a minute, to get started on your empowerment dashboard. And I am going to be looking for some mantras for volunteers, just so you know. So go.
love hearing other people's like favorite mantras. So raise your hand if you have a mantra that really fills you up, that you stay connected to. What is it? Let me have it. Pretend you're up on stage. I promise if I'm in the audience and you're ever up here, I will be the best audience member. Okay, back there. Thank you. Lose with dignity. Lose with dignity. Okay. Excellent. Yes, way back there. Mine is everybody has a story. Everybody has a story. <laughs> right. So we what they went through in their life. Right. Right. And we laugh, but right, we laugh, but that is everything. Is it's about putting yourself in someone else's shoes and not assuming that you know what's going on. I often say that, you know, when we're driving, right? And, you know, maybe my husband or my daughter who's learning to drive, you know, is questioning something in front of us. I'm like, you know, that could be someone's grandfather or somebody learning to drive. Okay, one more mantra. Yes? My mantra is celebrate me while I'm alive, don't eulogize me when I'm dead. Celebrate me when I'm alive, don't eulogize me when I'm dead. Okay, that's powerful. Yeah. All right. So, note to self. What's your name? Debbie. Debbie wants to be celebrated all the time. And you see Debbie? And what's nice about using lists within lists is that it's pretty darn nimble. You don't have to update the entire list or recopy a list. You can be very, very tactical, practical, pragmatic. Now, some of you may be thinking, hmm, Gail, you know, I totally do lists. I do lists. I've been doing lists. I love lists. I just want to remind you that what makes this different? The dashboards, okay? So this is an opportunity to take your list to the next level. So the benefits of using your dashboard on an ongoing basis to keep your awesome mind clear is that it takes the weight off your mind, puts it somewhere else, and it keeps everything really, really accessible. This tends to foster a feeling of calmness. At least you know where everything is. This is just this part. Soon you start to work into a part where you're like overwhelmed, but I'm going to address that, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, this is a lot of stuff. All right, so now you have your dashboards and you have an opportunity to raise your self-awareness. So I work with my clients and encourage them to study the contents of all their dashboards. Just not, not truly like sit down and study, but you know, just review them. And this can be really helpful if you're overwhelmed or you're stuck. Maybe you don't have enough going on. There are some people, which is awesome, you know, don't have enough going on and you're stuck. So you can start off by thinking about what are my dashboards trying to tell me? And I guarantee your dashboards are trying to tell you something. But you can delve deeper. You can start to take inventory and say, What's what in you? What makes me feel good? What makes me feel bad? What do I need more time for? What do I want more time for? What's missing? So these are some questions you can start to ask yourself. Okay? This is another big one. You can ask yourself, what's on fire? Do I still have firefighters in the room here? Okay. I don't know if I do. Okay, so ask yourself, what's on fire? Is what's sucking the oxygen out of everything else in your life? Okay? Oftentimes, this is a moment for people. And it becomes really, really obvious that they need to address something. The heart and soul of dashboarding really are the dashboards. So, because they allow you to zoom out and see the big picture, but also zoom in on the important details. So you can gain perspective and you can compare and contrast. Now years ago when I was just starting and starting to assess the contents, I saw very quick, quickly, wow, you know, I am over volunteering. 
Now, don't get me wrong, very fulfilling to volunteer, but I could see that it was like taking up the most room uh, on my dashboard, and I was like, wow, I can see it clearly. I'm over volunteering. I also, when I looked at my feelings, it was looking at my feelings that made me realize something is going on with my daughter, no matter what all the doctors are telling me. That was like, wow. And also at the time, I remember not seeing a lot that had to do with me. I hadn't started my empowerment dashboard. Okay, so I was like, what's missing? Where did I go? So you may have some powerful um, awareness as you study yours. So the benefits of using your dashboards to cultivate self-awareness is that it helps your brain interact with the information instead of trying to hold on to it. And why this is so powerful is it puts you in a much better position to problem solve, make decisions, make choices, and let's face it, that's what we're doing every single day, right? Problem solving. Problem solving for our students, problem solving for our family members, problem solving for ourselves, okay? So this connection you are making is going to fire up really your executive function. So have you heard the one about the Pope and Michelangelo? Have you? Okay, I'm going to tell you. So the Pope asked Michelangelo, tell me the secret of your genius. How did you make David the masterpiece of all masterpieces? And you know what Michelangelo said? It's simple. I just removed everything that wasn't David. Hmm. Interesting. So, I'd like you to think about that as you focus on creating your own masterpiece. All right? He was chipping away the rock. You're going to have to chip away some other things. So I'd like you to think about, when you look at your dashboard, what could I get rid of? What could I simplify? Lots of opportunities out there if we take the time to pause. What could I delegate? I often like to use the word empower, especially with my children. What could I let go of? Such a good opportunity. Where you look at it and you're like, you know what? I just let go of it. And my personal favorite, oh sorry, we're not there yet. What could I save for later? So it's, you know, safekeeping. You see it, it's there. You just know you're going to save it for later. And my favorite is, what can I say no to? It's really, really hard to say no. So I often say to people, you know, you could try thinking of it as no thank you. You know, oftentimes we feel guilty, right? It helps when you keep your priorities front and center to do all of this and keep going back to my priorities, my priorities. So I'm going to give you a little, uh, well, actually, before I do this, I do want to just pause and say, how many people in, your, in this room, raise your hand, do you have difficulty saying no? Like, it's hard, right? Okay, many of you, most of you, okay? So here's the no, say no pep talk. And this is not in relationship to Steve, okay? I just want everyone to know, all right? So, Steve, you're okay. So think about, it's not really time management. It's about obligation elimination. So I'm sure you've heard of FOMO, right? The fear of missing out, okay? That is driven by anxiety. That is obviously driven by fear that we find, hey, I can't say no because then, you know, this will happen or this will happen or this will happen. So the dashboarding process, as you continue to do it and you get clear on your priorities and connecting with them, can really turn in your FOMO to JOMO, which is the joy of missing out. Have you guys heard of JOMO? Okay. So the JOMO comes from a different place. It comes from a place of confidence and clarity. So even if there is something awesome, you might say, no thank you. Because you know that it's going to take away from what you're trying to focus upon. 
So we're just going to do a little practice here. On the count of three, I'd like everyone to say no, thank you. One, two, three. No, thank you. Awesome. All right. So the benefits of using your dashboard to think about how you could really get to less, it frees up your mind and your time. And just like with the closet, it opens up possibilities again. All right, so as we wind down here, I'm going to review the key habits. Number one, use your dashboards. Play around with using dashboards to organize your tasks and your thoughts across every area of your life. Is it going to take you time to do that? Absolutely. Okay? This is an opportunity to move away from living reactively to really being intentional. Use your dashboards. To cultivate self-awareness, it really does foster objectivity. You are stepping out of your brain. And use your dashboards to help you get to less. Okay, this is the foundation of dashboarding. It is a process. It is a practice. I swear by it. I've been doing it for years. And I see how it has, you know, it has changed my life. And I see how it can change others. And why it works, not to you know, belabor a point here, but it's constantly coming at us. It is relentless, right? All the things that are demanding our limited time and, and uh, attention. So dashboarding really sets you up to continuously assess what's coming at you and distill it. So the side effects, don't, bite, don't be fooled. This is pretty simple. I mean, it, it's hard because it, these are new habits. Is it relaxes your mind? It fosters problem solving, helps you pause, create energy, builds confidence, invites clarity. Implementation, I'm just going to touch upon that. So how would you implement this? Well, if you love technology, you can play around with Google Keep. You can play around with Trello to do this. I personally love the power of sticky notes. I know there's a lot of teachers in the room, and raise your hand if you love sticky no notes too, okay? Maybe you have sticky notes all over your desk, right, and on your computer. Well, you can use sticky notes in a notebook to create your own dashboard system, all right? So, if you want to continue your dashboarding journey, this is on the front of your handout. You can just simply text the word dashboard to the phone number, and you are going to get some more resources. Where do we go from here? Well, I just shared the foundation of dashboard. When I do more in-depth training, we focus on this part, which is you have your dashboards. OK, cool. You are clear on your priorities. Cool. Then I work with you to work off of one daily plan every single day. Now, this is a plan, not a list. Okay? Does everyone know the difference between a list and a plan? A plan is simply something that is tied to goals. Right? It's highly, highly intentional. So you use, it really helps, it's, it's connected to your dashboards, it's connected to your priorities, and of course, your calendar. So, um, that's for another day. But that is really the next uh, part of dashboarding. It's all about taking mindful actions. Okay? Uh, so raise your hand if you work off of a plan. Okay, raise your hand if you really work off of a to-do list. Okay, that's where I was. All right, we're just about done. I want to share my favorite quote. Is the suspense killing you? Okay, here it is. To the mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders. I believe strongly that you should look to the outside for inspiration, but look within where your real wisdom resides. Now I'm also, you don't have to name this tune, but we are going to end this with a song. We started off with too much information, and I think now we're going to end with I Can See Clearly Now. You can dance with me off stage if you want. All right, thank you guys so much.
Thank you. <laughs> 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 Check out your seats. Don't leave anything. <laughs> 